Hello, everyone. Greetings from Smarty Head Office in Shanghai. I'm Fiona from Smarty, and I will be the host for today's webinar. Welcome to the very first session of Smarty International Academy webinar 2024. Okay, thank you for the introduction by the host. Let's begin. Uh, I'm the Dr. Tao Wu from the Shanghai Taikang BYBO Dental Hospital. It's my honor to present my one hour lecture here. The title of my lecture is uh, a novel clear SHSGTB, correcting severe class two jaw discrepancy. A brief introduction of myself. I'm a DDIS and a PhD, uh, orthodontics. I'm a key member of the Professor Gongshen orthodontic team and vice dean of Shanghai Taikang BYBO Dental Hospital, a commit, committee member of Shanghai Orthodontic Association and the instructor of Tweet Mail Field Foundation in China, a fellow of the World Federation of Orthodontists and a smart GS major expert. I graduated in the fourth military medical university in the 2000 year. And uh, after graduate, I worked in the Department of Orthodontics in our university. Our university is very famous in the dental area in China. So after 2016, I quit the army and joined the Professor Gongshen Orthodontic team from 2017 to now. Here's a video about uh, our dental hospital. Our dental hospital located in the center of the Shanghai city. The area is more than 8,000 square meters. It includes three floors. Our hospital center is located in the sixth floor. This is a professor function. The professor is near to 59 years old. He worked more than four days per week. This is me. We have more than 150 patients per day, but in the weekend, the patient will be doubled. This is another famous doctor, Dr. Xu. He is an expert in the lingual orthodontics. He has more than 200 lingual orthodontic new cases per year. In addition to the clinical works, we also have the two-year orthodontic training program. So a lot of doctors from China will come to our hospital and learning from us. Okay, this is our hospital. I warmly welcome you to our hospital if you come to China. Okay, this is a lecture overview. The lecture decide, divided three parts. The first part is uh, what is a smart SHSGTB and the indications of a SHSGTB. The second part is uh, why smart SHSGTB therapy was stable. The last part is uh, how smart SHSGTB works. So let's begin. So what, what is the smart SHSGTB? That's from the case one. It's a 28 years old male. His chief complaint is a deficient lower jaw and crowding. The intraoral manifestation show the crooked teeth and the, the three depths. So what is the three depths? Let's see the patient uh, 3D oral scan. In the front of the wheel, we can see the patient has a severe deep over bed. In the lateral wheel, we can see the patient has severe over jet. And at back wheel, we can see the patient lower incisors bite to the upper palatal mucosa. 
So we know the patient has uh, increased deep curve speed. The latter view saw the patient very deep over bed, over jet, and uh, very deep over bed. So we know the patient has uh, increased deep over bed, the severe deep over jet, and uh, very deep curve of speed. We called these three depths male occlusion. Okay, the patient uh, lateral profile shows the patient uh, mandible is a uh, retrusion, or we call the patient uh, has deficient uh, lower jaw. Why we see that? That's compared with another patient profile. It's a very beautiful young lady. It's 22 years old. We can draw a vertical line from the subnasal point so normally the upper lip should be two to four millimeter in front of the line and uh, the lower lip should be on the line of two millimeter in front of the line. The chin should uh, be two to four millimeter behind the line. So according to the standard, we can see our patient uh, has a deficient lower jaw. The panoramic radiograph before treatment of the patient. And uh, the lateral cephalometric analysis of the patient, we can see the angle SNB, AMB, and SND were decreased significant. So we know the patient uh, has a mandible retrusion. So let's summarize the patient uh, pre-treatment -treat uh, uh, manifestation. We have the lateral profile, uh, we have the uh, lateral self and uh, the intraoral manifestation. The patient chief complaint is a deficient lower jaw and uh, three depths. So how to treat this patient? As a title of the lecture, we use the SMARTY S8 SGTB. So the SMARTY S8 SGTB is a clear appliance with the positioning block. So let's see the animation of the phase one. The main purpose of the phase one is a mandible repositioning with a teeth correction. So you can see I expand the upper dentition and uh, I intrude the lower incisors to leveling the lower curve of speed and uh, align the upper and the lower dentition. Let's see the treatment progress. This picture is a uh, one month of the phase one. So you can see the patient wear the SHS GTB. The patient uh, have to wear the plans seven by 24. That means the patient wear the plans all day long, including the meal. This is a three months of the phase one. I asked the patient to take off the plans and to take a picture. The five months of the phase one, seven months of the phase one, and at last, the 10 months of the phase one. Normally, the phase one is uh, nine to 10 months. So compared with the before treatment, uh, we can see the upper dentition is expanded and uh, the upper and the lower dentition were aligned. The, the front and the lateral view of the intraoral manifestation we can see at the end of the phase one, we correct the deep over bed, deep over jet, and uh, improved the lower curve of the speed. The panoramic radiograph before and uh, 
after phase one. Can you see any difference compared with the uh, OPG before treatment? It's a very important uh, question. It will help you to understand why the SHSGTB therapy was stable. I'll answer this question later. The lateral self before and uh, after phase one, we can see the mandible advancement. Okay, after phase one, we go to the phase two. The main purpose of the phase two is uh, reconstruct the occlusion. So you can see I extrude the post posterior segment and uh, retract the anterior incisors. So let, let's see the treatment progress. So compare with uh, the phase one, you can see we remove the block in the in the smart smart TSH. It will help us to extrude the lower posterior teeth. The three months of the phase two, you can see the the posterior segment uh, almost contact. The six months of the phase two, the upper and the lower molar contact with each other. The finish of the phase two, we correct uh, the deep over bed, deep over jet, and we get the class one molar relationship. This is the final refinement. We do some uh, uh, teeth adjustment to, to get the better result. So this is a finished, the intraoral manifestation. And uh, this is a patient facial, facial, facial photos before and after. Well, we can see after the, the SH, uh, SGDP treatment, uh, uh, the patient lower third facial height increased. It let the patient uh, facial aesthetic looks more beautiful. The smile before and after. And uh, the profile before and after. You can see the significant uh, change about the patient profile the patient is very happy about the treatment result. The OPG before and after, the question is the same. Can you see any difference? And uh, the lateral self before and after. After the treatment, we can see the mandible advancement. Okay, so after 20 months of the SHS GDP treatment, we get a very good result. We get the class one molar and canine relationship, and we also correct the three depths, and we improve, improve the patient profile significantly. I think it's a very high efficient treatment. Some doctor maybe think is there any other treatment options? So let us go back to the patient 3D oral scan. The molar and canine relationship is uh, typically class two. So some doctor maybe suggest uh, do the upper molar distalization to correct the molar relationship and uh, to retract the upper incisors to correct uh, the deep over jet, but how much can you can you correct by the upper molar distalization? I think uh, the molar distalization, in my opinion, is uh, the limit is uh, four to five millimeter. But uh, in this patient, if you want to correct from class two to class one, you need maybe seven to eight millimeter. I think it's impossible or it's very difficult for the treatment option 
by the molar distalization. The next question is, uh, what about the face? We all know the patient uh, has a mandible deficiency. So if you, if you retract the upper incisors by the molar distalization, I think the patient profile will become more concave. It's not beautiful for the patient. The next treatment option may be extraction, but uh, extraction in the upper or in both. Some doctor maybe maybe suggest the treatment option is uh, extract uh, the upper four and uh, use the extraction space to retract the upper incisors to correct uh, the deep over jet. But how about the deep over bed? We all know it's very difficult to retract the incisors when the patient has very deep over bed. The next question is still what about the face? Because the patient is a, the profile is concave. If you do the extraction uh, treatment plan and uh, retract uh, the upper incisors, I think the, the patient profile where it became more concave is not beautiful for the patient. So let us see some extraction cases of the three deaths. It's a 22 years male. From the profile, we can see the patient mandible is a retrusion. After three years extract treatment, the patient problem is not corrected, but the three deaths became even worse. So how do we do? We do the mandibular advancement simulation and the prepare for the SH SGTB therapy. Another extraction case of the three deaths is a, it's a male adult uh, about uh, 26 years old. After four years clear and lunar treatment, we can see the profile is, uh, is still the, the mandibular retrusion. And the three depths was still very seriously. The so OPG after four years treatment, we can see from the film, the lower curve of speed is very deep. And uh, the lateral set after four years treatment, there is still very deep curve of speed, the very deep over bed and over jet. The third extraction cases is a very difficult cases, three depths. It's a horrible cases. The, it's a 24 years male. The patient began her first treatment in 2015. And uh, after four years of treatment, uh, he can't get a very good result. So he transferred to the second doctor to begin the treatment at 2019. But uh, after four years treatment, uh, the result is uh, it's not good. So the patient uh, come to our hospital in last year to begin the third treatment. The profile is uh, the patient uh, uh, at uh, the second treatment. From the profile, we can see the mandible retrusion. And uh, the three depths of the intraoral manifest manifestation, the whole upper dental arch, and uh, the lower right side missed one premolar. The OPG before second treatment, we can see the very deep curve of speed. And the lateral set before the second treatment, so from the last year, the patient come to our hospital, the intraoral view, we can see after four years, the second orthodontic treatment, the three depths become even worse. The second doctor choose to 
extract uh, three premolar, the upper two and uh, the 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 left set in the lower. The OPG before the third treatment. And uh, the latter set before the third treatment compare the OPG before the second treatment, we can see the overbed increased. So how we how do we do to, to treat this patient? We remove the braces of the patient and do the mandibular advancement simulation to prepare for the third treatment. Okay. So compare with the three extraction cases, we know our first cases treated by the SHS GDB is very high efficient treatment. But some doctors may be asked, is this occlusion stable? Is this result stable, especially in adults? Okay, let, let us see the case two. It's a 33 years old male. The profile show the patient has a retrusive mandible. And the front view of the patient uh, uh, facial show he has a decreased the lower third facial height. And the intraoral manifestation, so the three depths, the OPG before treatment. The patient treated by using the SGTB. So what is the SGTB? Actually, the SGTB is a sagittal guidance twin block. It's a, a region of the SH SGTB. So the left picture is a SGTB and uh, the right is a clear SGTB. We call it SH SGTB. They have the same structure. So let's see the structure of the SGTB. It will help you to understand the SH SGTB. The SGTB has uh, two parts. The upper part is a bonded. and uh, it has an uh, expansion devices. The lower part is uh, removable. And uh, the intersection angle of the upper and the lower part is uh, 70 degree. So let's see the mechanism of the SGTB. When the patient wears the SGTB, the mandible will move forward and uh, the reaction forces will push the upper buccal segment backward. And uh, we use SDB to expand the upper dentition to coordinate the upper and the lower arch. And also we will get the space by the expansion. Okay, here is a video about the SDB. It's a very typical three depth patient. This is a SDB. The upper part is bonded, the lower part is removable. So when the patient wears the SDB, the mandible will put forward and the, the re reaction forces will put the buccal posterior segment to backward. We do the upper dentition expansion to get the space to align the upper anterior teeth. We can see the posterior area of the condyle. There is a new bone. It's very important to support the lower jaw to a new position. Yeah. 
We also need to use the mini tool to retract the upper anterior incisors. Okay, I think this video will help you to understand the treatment progress. Okay, let's see the treatment progress. It's a seven months of the treatment. The patient wears the SGTB and we put the uh, braces on the upper canine to canine and align the upper incisors. As the 10 months of the treatment, we remove the SGTB and we put the other braces on the upper and the lower. So you can see when we remove the SGTB, there is a very huge open bed on the posterior segment. It's a reflection of the lower curve of speed. The comparison before and after the patient profile has some improvement. Okay, this is an intraoral view of the manifestation. manifestation. Compare with the three depths before treatment, we get a very good result and the class one molar and the canine relationship. But the question is still, is this occlusion or is this result stable? Let's see the case, the case three. It's a 27 years old male. The front view of the intraoral, we can see the very deep overbed. And the intraoral manifestation, so there is a three depths. So we use this SDB to treat this patient. After 10 months of the treatment, we remove the, the plants of the SGTB. There is a very huge open bed on the posterior segment. It reflects the very deep lower curve of speed. So we have to, to do some elastic to reconstruct the occlusion of the patient. Okay, this is a result pre and the post. After the SDB treatment, we can see we get a very good anterior occlusion and class one molar and canine relationship. Is this result stable? So the question is why mandibular advancement by the SDB or S8 SGTB therapy was stable. Okay, so let's find some evidence from the very classical orthodontic textbook. These two textbooks is a very classical. We call the Bible of orthodontics. The one is a contemporary orthodontics. The other is a orthodontics current principle and techniques. So on the top of the slide, you can see which book and uh, which page I choose from. So the first question is uh, why do functional protrusive plants increase the mandibular growth rate? The answer is uh, the functional protrusive plants increase the mandibular growth rate because of the mandibular condylar cartilage is very important. Okay, let's see the page 18 from the chapter one, the orthodontic current principle and the techniques. The growth of the mandibular condyle tends to be relatively highly responsive to the mechanical, functional, and uh, hormonal stimuli both at the time of development and throughout the growth period. On the next page, we can see even in adults. However, it is not unusual to see areas of highland cartilage. We call it cartilage island, deep to the articular layer in the condyle. And uh, at page 103, 
the chapter four within the physiological limits. The TMJ has remarkable regenerative and adaptive capabilities. The TMJ can recover spontaneously from degenerative episodes. So let's see the figure four to 13. The superimposed tracing of the series of panoramic radiographs documenting the degeneration of the mandibular condyle between 13 to 18 years age. So from the picture, we can see at the age of the 13, before orthodontic treatment, the shape of the condyle is in the black line. So the condyle shape is very good. But uh, at the age of 18, after orthodontic treatment, the shape of the condyle in the blue line. So we know there is a degeneration of the patient uh, mandible condyle. But between the age of 18 to 25, the degenerative condyle grew, restoring the original length of the mandible. So at the age of the 25, the, the shape of the patient condyle in the right line, it re restoration the original length of the mandible. So from the patient, we know the TMJ has remarkable regenerative and adaptive capabilities. The TMJ can recover spontaneously from degenerative episodes, even in adults. And uh, Professor Shen published uh, the review article, Cephalometric Evaluation of Condyle and uh, the Mandibular Growth Modification. And uh, in 2005, the Professor Shen published a very important article named uh, The Adaptive Remodeling of the Condylar Cartilage, a transition from the chondrogenesis to osteogenesis. The paper published in the in the very famous journal, the JDR, because the, pa the, the paper is very important. So the image from the paper was selected as a cover image. Also, the professor Shen published some his report of the SGTB. This is a one case report. This is a, another case report. So let's go back to the classical textbooks, the contemporary orthodontics, the page 457, the chapter 14, the potential effect of the functional appliance therapy for correction of the class two skeletal malocclusion are uh, illustrated here. The most desirable and variable effect is for the mandible to increase in length by growth at the condyle, the green arrow. And the chapter four of the orthodontic current principle and the techniques show the growth related condyle modeling in the nine to 16 years old male is still in the, in the condyle, the right arrow. So let's simulate the S8 SGTB therapy. When the patient wear the S8 SGTB, the appliance will move the mandible downward and forward. So as a superior and posterior area of the condyle, the cortical bone of the of the area will stimulate by the continuous mechanical force. As as this force, the 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 cortical bone of the of this area will appear adaptive remodeling. So there is a new bone. It will support the mandible at the new position. So as this occlusion stable, let's see the case three. It's a OPG after the SGTB therapy. Please look at the superior posterior area of the condyle 
you can see the new cortical bone. So let me draw with the right line so you can see the new cortical bone very clearly. So the, the patient uh, started his treatment at 2015 and uh, finished the treatment at uh, 20, 2018 and three years follow up at 2021. So we can see the result is very stable. And the OPG pre-treatment, the OPG after treatment. So now you can see the new bone at uh, the posterior and uh, superior area of the condyle and the three years follow up. The lateral self of the patient pre-post and the three years follow up. The result is uh, very stable. The facial profile before and after and the three years follow up. Okay, let's go back to the case two. Is this occlusion stable? Let's check the OPG of the patient after seven months SGTP treatment. Compare with the OPG before treatment. So please look at the superior posterior area of the condyle. You can see the new cortical bone. Let me draw in the yellow line so you can see the new cortical bone very clearly. Okay, let's summarize why the SHSGTB therapy was stable. When the patient wear the SHSGTB, the mandible were moving down and forward. So the superior posterior area of the condyle will stimulate the continuous mechanical force. The, the cortical bone of the area will appear adaptive remodeling and the readjustment between the condyle and the fossa. This new cortical bone will support him for the, mandible, the mandibular advancement. Because the lecture is just only one hour, so I have no enough time to show the full cases. So let me show um, some cases, OPG before and after. This is a 13 years female. So after the SHS GDP therapy, we can see the new cortical bone. And uh, this is a 16 years male. So after the SHSGTB therapy, we can see the new bone at the top of the condyle. A 19 years female. So after the therapy, we can see the new cortical bone. We call it double contour. The 24 years of female, after the SHS GTB therapy, we can see the double contour on the top of the condyle. This is a very difficult case because this 26 years of female experienced the degeneration of the condyle. But after we use the SHS GTB to treat the patient, we can see the new bone on the top of the condyle. This is a, another doctor, not in our orthodontic team. It's a Dr. Liu from Guangzhou, China. It's a 24 years old patient. So after the treatment uh, by using the SHSGTP, we can see the new bone on the top of the condyle. A 21 years patient from the Dr. Wu, after the post-treatment, we can see the new bone at the posterior of the condyle. The, the 31 years old patient, after the SHSGTP therapy, we can see the new bone on the top of the condyle. Okay, a lot of doctors learn from us and uh, treat this three depth patient by using the SHSGB, they get the very beautiful result. So they publish the result on the internet.
Let's see some evidence from the CBCT. It's a 24 years of female. So after seven months of SH, SGTP therapy, we can see the newborn as a posterior superior of the condyle. The superimposition of the condyle before and after treatment. The green is a pre-treatment. The red is a post-treatment. So we can see the newborn as a posterior superior area of the condyle. So let's go back to the case one. I have been asked the question, can you see any difference before and after? So now you can see very clearly as a posterior area, there is a new bone. Okay, let's check the patient CBCT, the red TMG pretreatment treatment post phase one, post phase two, and uh, post treatment, you can see the new bone on the posterior area of the condyle. And also you can see the readjustment of the condyle and the fossa. The left TMG, the pretreatment, the post phase one, post phase two, and the post treatment. So what's the indications of the SHSGTB? The professor Shen has a diagnostic classification for the malocclusion with a facial prognosis. The, the, the facial prognosis can divide it uh, five types. It includes the fundamental dental alveolar, the fundamental skeletal, the mandibular retrusion, dental alveolar, and the mandibular retrusion skeletally. Because the time is limited, so I have no enough time to explain the detail. But uh, these three, three types, we use SHSDB to do the treatment. It's a clinical manifestation of the three, of the three types we treated by using SHSGTB. Here is a simplified classification for facial prognosis. I suggest you take a picture so you know these three types is an indication of the SHSGTB. So let's summarize, summarize the indications of the SHSGTB. It's a facial prognosis with retrusive mandible. It's a class two molar relationship combined with the three depths. Okay, let's see the history of the mandibular advancement. From the textbook, the history of orthodontics, our professional history can date back more than 2000 years. So to be an orthodontist, you should be very proud. And uh, on the chapter nine of the, of the textbook, we can see the history of the functional appliance can be traced back to 1879, when normal Kinsley introduced the bite jumping appliance. So the functional appliance to crack the severe class two, the history is more than 150 years. Uh, our professional founder, the Idaho H. Angle, also used the non compliance functional class two fracture. From the classical textbook, we can see a lot of design of the functional appliance, such as the Bionator, the Franco II. The classical twin block, the intersection between the upper and the lower is a 45 degree. It's different with the SGTB. It's a bonded herbst. And the Mara. 
the forces plans is a fixed plans and uh, the SGTP at last is a SH SGTP. So why we choose the SH SGTP to treat three deaths? The reason is uh, when we move the mandible forward, in the meantime, we can do a lot of uh, teeth correction. So it will save the treatment time. So to answer why we choose a smart TSH SGTP to treat the patient with three depths, let's see how smart TSH SGTP works. The left is a bonded SGTP. The right is a smart clear SH SGTP. They have the same structure, but uh, the mechanism is a little bit different. The disadvantage of the fixed SGTP is uh, when we remove the plants, there will be a very huge open bed on the posterior segment. Another example can show the very significant open bed on the posterior segment. There is uh, two similar cases, the one treated by the SGTP, the other treated by the SH SGTP. So after 10 months treatment, remove the appliance, we can see the patient treated by the SGTP it has a very huge open bite on the posterior segment. But uh, the patient treats SH as GDP, the open bite is very small. So the total treatment of the patient treated by the SGDB is uh, 21 months. And uh, the patient treated by the SH as GDB is only 13 months. So why the treatment time is a uh, difference? I think because the SHS GTB repositioning the mandible and uh, correcting the myoocclusions simultaneously. All we can see the SHS GTB moves the teeth efficiently, meanwhile, repositioning the mandible. So let's see the SHS GTB move the teeth efficiently. The, the, the main mechanism is uh, expansion, molar distalization, alignment, and uh, leveling the curve of the speed. So the expansion, why we do the expansion when the mandible relocated to the forward? Because we have to coordinate the width of the upper and the lower we have to establish the normal posterior to stalk and uh, obtain the space for alignment. The left blue one is the upper dentition. The pink color is a lower dentition. So when the patient has a mandible retrusion, the occlusion is like this. So when the patient wear the SHA GTB to move the mandible forward, the, the occlusion like this. So we know the width of the posterior segment is not coordinate. So we have to expand the upper dentition to coordinate the occlusion of the upper and lower. Also, we use the the SHS has GTB to correct the posterior tooth talk when we expanded the upper arch. And uh, we also get a space for alignment. The next, uh, the next mechanism is a molar distalization. We do the molar distalization for adjusting the relationship between the molar and the canines and obtain the space for alignment and uh, obtain the space for retracting 
anterior teeth. Okay, sometimes when we do the mandible re relocation or repositioning, the molar relationship is still class two. So we have to do the upper molar distalization to, to let the molar relationship from class two to class one. But sometimes when we relocated the mandible, the molar relationship became class three. So we have to do the lower molar distalization. Let's see an example. It's a very beautiful young lady. Her chief complaint is a mandible protrusion, but uh, her molar relationship is a class one. So we move the mandible forward by the SHS GTB, but the class, but the molar relationship from class one to class three. So we distalize the lower molar by using the mini screw to get from a class three relationship to class one. And uh, the next mechanism is uh, alignment when the mandible relocated to the forward. We close the anterior space and uh, establish the positive torque of anterior teeth and uh, remove the interference factors of serious crowding. It's a very typical three depths with anterior space. So at the phase one, when the patient where the SHS GTB to move the mandible forward, we close the anterior space. The anterior space were closed. And uh, another very typical three depth patient, as a post of the phase one, you can see from the picture, we correct the anterior teeth talk. The last uh, mechanism is uh, leveling the curve of the speed. Because we know after the treatment by the STB, there is a very huge open bed in the posterior segment. It's a reflecting of the lower curve of speed. So when we design the SHS GTB, we hope to leveling the curve of speed very efficiently. So we have three designs. The first is uh, we do the anterior intrusion like this. So when we remove the plants, the open bite on the posterior segment will be very small. The next design is uh, we decrease the height of the block gradually. It will help to extrude the posterior teeth. It will help leveling the curve of speed. So at the end of the phase one, we can get very small open bite in the posterior segment. The next design is a uh, posterior teeth extrusion with elastic. Okay, because we just have one hour lecture, so let's summarize the lecture. What is the Smarty SHS GDB? The Smarty SHS GDB is a uh, clear version of the SGTB. It, have, it has positioning block when the patient wear the plants, the patient wear has a improved profile and uh, correct the three depths. The SGTB, I say it has to be in vitro and in vivo. And what's the indications of SHS GDB? Facial prognosis with retrusive mandible, the class two molar relationships, and uh, with three depths. Let's see some cases. It's a very typical three depths patient and uh, very severe. The first visit, and the patient wear SHS GDB, and uh, at the finish, we get a very good result. 
the patient profile before and after. Another very severe three depth patient, the patient uh, treated by the ICHS GTP. So at the end of the finish, at the end of the treatment, we can see the patient uh, has a very good result. The profile before and after. The last patient uh, is is a still is a three depths, is a very severe deep curves B, and uh, treated by the ICHS GTB. So at the end of the treatment, uh, we also get a very good anterior occlusion and the class one molar and canine relationship. The profile before and after. So why smart -E SHS GTB therapy was stable? Because when the patient wear the SHS GTB, the mandible will move, move downward and forward, the posterior and the superior area of the condyle will stimulate by the continuous mechanical force. So the cortical bone of the of the patient will appear adaptive remodeling and uh, readjustment between condyle and the fossa. The new cortical bone were supporting for the man mandible advancement. Okay, the last is uh, how smart SHS GTB works. I think it's a it's a very very useful to treat the patient with three depths because the the patient uh, one patient where the SH the repositioning the mandible and uh, correcting the individual teeth simultaneously so the STB is a uh, very high efficient. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Guo, for your excellent lecture today. And uh, now it is time for our, our Q&A part. So if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the Q&A box or the chat box. OK, so Dr. Guo, there is one question from the audience in the Q&A part asking, do you consider panoramic X-ray a reliable method for evaluation of condylar growth? Okay, it's a very good question. Because you know, um, in maybe 20 years ago, we just have the panoramic film. We don't have the CBCT evidence. But now every patient, we will take the CBCT and to compare with the CPCT, we have a more evidence of the CPCT. So the question, I think the panoramic radiograph maybe is not a very reliable method for evaluation, but still is a method. But now we have a lot of CPCT evidence. All right, thank you everyone for coming. But before we finish off today's webinar, I'd like to show you what to expect in our next session. The information about our next webinar, it will be presented by Dr. Alex Pagnona uh, from Colombia, and it will be presented fully in Spanish on February 29th. So please stay tuned for our next session. Also, if you'd like to know more about Smarty Clear Aligners and our uh, webinars, please feel free to follow us on our social account, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, you are more than welcome to follow us and to uh, get in touch with us as well.